Woo! You know, we better do what we're supposed to do because when we get up to heaven, we're going to be worshiping like a whole lot. Amen. So we should practice down here as much as we can. And that's serious. God is so good to us. He's so powerful. So many things are happening in the world. So many questions want to be answered. Who do we believe? Who do we don't believe? Who's right? Who's wrong? God addressed Moses once. And Moses was trying to decide who's right, who's wrong, who's right, who's wrong. In the book of Numbers, and this is what God told him. He said, don't spend so much time on trying to figure out who's right and wrong. Obey me. And in that obedience, of course, God strengthened Jethro. He got some help in judging the situations in the tribes and doing certain things. Sometimes we put so much focus on who's right and who's wrong so we can justify us, and we may be the ones that are wrong. But it's not about that. It's about just obeying God. If you obey God, if and then are two words in the Bible you should read very carefully because a lot of prophecy, a lot of the things that God wants to bless us with is dependent upon if and then. If you do this, then this will happen. If you don't, well, it's opposite. It's not going to happen. But today I want to encourage you. I asked God personally. I just said, Lord, what do we share? What do I share with the people? What do you want me to hear? And this is what I heard. I will protect you. We're facing very perilous times. People got really upset. And I understand being upset, the storming of the Capitol. I, in my lifetime, which hasn't been extended as many as some, have not seen one single man named Donald Trump so hated. I've not known anybody on the earth so hated. I mean, I'm not going to compare him, but beside Jesus, being ridiculed, called Beelzebub, called the devil himself. And now when they stormed the Capitol, they blamed him. Yeah. And they said he was doing a jig, dancing. But really, when he addressed the nation, he said he, he dispersed the National Guard. He put it out there. So I'm not defending or any other area. So whoever you vote for, you vote for. But what I'm trying to say is this. If somebody's hated that much, I'm going to lean toward them more than I'm on the other Thank side. Because sometimes when people are hated that much, they're either totally evil or totally on mark. Yep. So everybody makes choices. But I'm not concerned about the government because, you see, the government that I serve is already established according to Isaiah in chapter 9. It's upon the shoulders of Jesus Christ that the government sits. So the chaos of man and the corruption that he's caused, he'll pay the price for that. There's a scale for everything. But God says to people throughout the Bible, I will protect you. But the key to that is that you've got to do exactly what Romans 11.22 says on that scripture we got for this year. We have to trust him. Yeah. And then it says, continue trusting. Now, what does that mean? That means have faith in God. Listen, you, if you're focusing only on the news, you're going to corrupt your mind. I mean, if I sit down and listen to it long enough, I get corrupt. My mind starts to act up. I just like, oh, forget that. I'm done. That's why we actually during this time... And we are heading toward a 21-day fast. I encourage you. We begin tomorrow from the 11th to the 21st. I encourage you to seek the Lord and ask Him. Just ask Him, what should we fast? How should I fast? Fasting is about getting you closer to God. It's not about getting a new car or, you know, you know, right? Buying a new house or paying your bills. It's about getting closer to God. Thank you so much, everyone. Getting that, you know, that intimacy with God. As we heard on Wednesday night from Pastor Holulu, a wonderful message on being, you know, in His presence. And that's so powerful. When you're in His presence... You notice you don't get sad, you don't get upset, you don't get all worked up. Yeah. He gives the calm. The Holy Spirit gives the calm. Yes. I was never a religious person, but when God saved me, He saved all of me, not just pieces of me. Yes. You don't bury somebody in the cemetery with their hands and legs sticking out. Right. You know what I mean? You, you either, I remember doing water baptism, I'm like, you got to do it again. Why? Your leg kicked out. We're going to get you all in there, man. Everybody, you got to go down again. No, I don't want to. You got to go down again. <laughs> But it's a powerful thing that we, when we get saved, we're, all, we're saved. Everything in us is saved. Our soul, but our flesh still acts up. We still walk upon this earth. But we're going to start with Nahum. And I want to encourage you, God will protect you. Amen. It's his promise. Thank you, Lord. It's part of his inheritance that you receive him and he's blessed in that. I don't make light of any tragedy or anything that's going on. But I believe what I believe. And you have to believe what you believe. When people ask me questions... So many times people, when we were in trouble in this sanctuary, and so many things we were going through in the finances and everything, some of the people that was with us for a while, they're no longer here, of course. I say that, of course, in a, a sarcasm because they're the ones that were trying to tell me, just walk away, walk away from the sanctuary, walk away from this. But I'll tell you what I said, and I say it today. they got to take it from me. When you surrender so easily what God has given you, it says, occupy until I come. 
I truly believe that God wanted us here. Not because we're any better than anybody else, but anybody that's been here long enough knows that God did want us here. Yes. Otherwise, he wouldn't have done what he did with A and B. He wouldn't have done beyond our asking. He did way beyond what we asked. Way beyond. During a time of, listen, during a time before even this pandemic, if whatever you want to call it, occurred, A and B started working with us to help us to maintain because we make a difference in this community. Every church does in its position, a place. No, you're not hearing me. Let me tell you in the beginning, before we start service, what we did this week. We, uh, as the body of Christ, just blessed MEO. 83 and 68 employees. You do the math. And delivered them lunch. Had them delivered lunch. Um, because some might ask, well, why them? Well, they get paid for what they do, but they pick up people that can't go to the doctor, can't go to the dentist. They have wheelchairs. They pick them up. They use our children's church parking lots to do it from the apartment. We are here in this whole time, and we've been doing it during this time, what they call the pandemic. It's been a time of power for us. We've been blessing, as the body of Christ, those that serve others. Amen. That's what we've been doing. Now, the recipients of our paralyzed vets, they get blessed, but we bless them. Those in ER, they serve. We bless them because yeah. they're helping others. Yeah, they get yeah. paid for it, but that's a stupid yeah. mentality. Yeah. Oh, well, they get paid for it, so we shouldn't do it. No. When God blesses, he doesn't look to every labor profits. You work, principal application, Proverbs, all labor profits. So, listen, you can be doing the devil's work and you're still going to profit if you go to work and show up and get your paycheck. Is that right? Yeah. It's in government. Yeah. They show up, they get their paycheck, right? Not all of them are doing God's work. That's right. Probably very few. Yeah. But we still have people that love the Lord. We still have people in government that care about people. And not about their pocketbooks, greed, and power. And I'm not claiming to know it all, but I do know Jehovah God. I do know my service to Him is without one thing for sure, I'll do whatever I'm told. Amen. God will never ask you to do anything wicked or evil, but He'll always protect you. When I started many, many years, over two decades ago in ministry, I, one thing I did share with God, I said, Lord, I'll do whatever you say. Protect my family. Watch over my family. I'll do whatever you say. Watch over the church. I'll do whatever you want. Most of you say, well, I don't want to say that. I don't want to do that. Well, because it's an open door. But yet you sing the song, no matter what, no matter what. Well, no matter what is here. Yeah. We're in it now. Right? We kind of came into the place. I take this scripture that we have, and not this one right here. This is what we're preaching. This is serious too. But Romans 11, 22 is the scripture God gave us for this year. This house. Whether you believe it or not, if you're in this house, you go to another house, you can believe whatever you want. But in this house, this is the scripture that he gave us. Last year he gave us that scripture and I had no concept or idea what it meant in Joshua 3, 4. That we'll go to some place we've never been before. That's the word, prophetically powered by God's words. And look where we went. I didn't see it worldwide. I saw it as a church area, a church thing, because I'm in a church. I'm with the body of Christ. But God said, no, no. And he showed during the world. Now he didn't cause it, but it was a worldwide event. Everybody shut down. I've never been alive that long to see the whole planet shut down and close down offices and close down businesses. Only control essential food distribution. You're not hearing me. You better read the book of Revelation and understand its power. But today I got news for you. God will protect you. I got news for you. According to the word, right into the New Testament. But there's one key word you're going to be hearing. Trust. I believe firmly if you want to glorify God in your body, you don't got to do all these works and all these great things. He just wants us to trust Him. Love Him, yes, but trust Him. And that's essential to our, not existence, not our survival, our victory. Amen. That trust. Amen? Amen? Thank you. I appreciate all your giving. I appreciate your love. One thing you got to know, when God saved me, I wouldn't have saved me. So I really don't care. I care about people, but I don't care what you think about me. I'm going to say it again. I don't really don't care what you think about me. Because you see, if I cared about everybody and everything they thought about me, I'd be like in a, in a house that needs mentally help, you know, for my brain. I would have a meltdown if I was still here. I love everybody. I care. But I don't care what people think about me. I know I'm more interested in what God knows about me. Because he knows everything. Even the things I don't want to deal with, he knows those too. And you can say, I'm not that person. Well, that's, you, you live in your bubble. I don't live in a bubble. I, I live in a world that looks like pretty chaotic most of the time. Let's turn to Nahum 1.7. This is the good news translation. Anybody ready for the good news? Oh, yeah. yeah, me too. That's why I believe the new good news translation is one that gives us an easy directive. When you're ready, let's read it together. 
Ready? One, two, three. The Lord is good. He protects his people in times of trouble. He takes care of those who turn to him. Thank you, Father, for that word. Simple and powered by your word and your love for your people in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I love that. It's simple, that scripture. God is good. We know that, right? Come on. First John, right? 4, 8. God is good. Jesus quoted, he said, nobody good but the Father. So if you think you're good, I burst your bubble right now. Not good. I'm not good. I tell my own son, I ain't good. In fact, I can be a little bit mean sometimes. Anybody say amen? amen. Okay, we got some honest people in the house. The rest, you lying, got to get delivered, all right? And then it says, I want to share just a simple meaning for the word turn. Because it says to, right, he protects his people in times of trouble. So we're in trouble, right? We're in troubled times, right? We know in 2 Timothy 3, the troubling times, perilous times. And he says that he takes care of them. What? That turn to what? Turn to him. This is what the word turn means, simple meaning. To go to someone. That's what it means, to turn. The term to turn, not just turn, but to turn. To trust someone during difficult times. Well, that's what the word says. To alter and change your direction. In other words, if God is saying, turn to me, you're not going in the right direction. I'm not going to tell you I'm always going in the right direction. I need God to say, turn to me. You ever get mad on the road? You ever get mad where stupid people are doing things and you become more stupid than them because you join in? Right? Right, they edge you on in the back, right? You're tired, you're coming from work, they edge you on, edge you on. Then they overtake you, get in front, then slow down. What you should do is beep the hunger. Jesus love you, but I don't do that often either. You know, just, you try doing that. They, they won't bother you anymore. They'll probably speed off. But we'd rather go neck and neck and give, you know, sign language. But they seem to only know one sign language. It's just so weird. They went to another way. To alter and change direction. The other one that I really love for me is the fourth definition. To change your approach. Now, I know when you're in an aircraft and you don't come in right, they're going to make you reapproach. Right. Missed approach. There you go. And that's a, that's a jet technician mechanic. It's beyond mechanics there. That's why I always tell Pastor Hulu, keep him flying. Because you fly with that airline flight over there. <laughs> now, first, listen. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 2 and 3. This is from the NIV translation. And the only reason I go to these translations is I study American translation, which means I study English translation. If I was studying Greek, I'd never make it to Sunday service. Amen. If I was studying Hebrew only, I'd never make it here to preach. It's just very difficult for me. Any language is difficult. I am only uh, versed in two languages, in English and in tongues. Amen. I'm not bilingual. Amen. You could say I am, but not quite. So this is what it says, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 2 and 3. Verse 2. And pray that we may be delivered from wicked and evil people, for not everyone not everyone has faith. Yeah, that's right. Verse 3. But the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. So two things are identified here. There are people that don't serve God that serve Satan. Yeah. Sorry. Pop. But God says two things here in the scriptures to his, to his I want to call him apostle. That's actually what it is. And this is what he says. Not only is he faithful, not only is it troubled times, but he said that there are wicked and evil people. And then he lets you know who they serve. Amen. He says, because he's not going to deliver you from the wicked and evil people. He says, I'll deliver you from the what? The evil one. The, evil one. the one that's directing them. The one that's causing the real chaos. When you look at the footage, some of it, of those that stormed the Capitol, really, those guys even vote? Yeah. Seen the guy with the horns and the big ruffles? Oh, come on. you got to be actually crazy to believe these guys. Crazy. Were there Trump supporters there? Yeah. But anybody can buy a flag and a hat which says Trump. Yeah. It was a setup. Yeah, right. I'm not going to go too far, but I'll tell you, if I wanted to destroy somebody, I'd pay people to go do that. Yeah. I came from a wicked world. I came from drug dealing and nightclubbing. We deceived and manipulated all the way through. And those of you, anybody went to nightclubs before you knew Jesus? Anybody? All right. Let me tell you what. If you ever visit our nightclub after midnight, I'm giving you half shots. I don't even give you the full potion of liquor. I don't even give you liquor sometimes in your mixed drinks. I rip you off. I make money for the house because you're drunk already. Bartender's listening. They're going, oh, man. 
It's the truth. We had liquor guns, short shots, quarter shots, half shots. You were deceived. And you see those guys moving fancily? They're just ripping you off. Right. You go to a free pour bar, that's where you go, but they still, they juice their liquor, which means they have two racks of liquor, all colored water. I'm telling you the truth. I was trained by the best thief around. These guys are out of Alaska. Why am I sharing this? The world is a deception. And I did that for 10 years. And I didn't care. Because I was part of the deception. So I was an evil, wicked person serving the evil one. But even though I didn't have knowledge of that, because I didn't recognize that, but every time I was in trouble, guess what? Oh, God, please help me. Yeah. No, I would, because I was, I was taught about God, mostly from my grandfather. And my mom then, they, like, they prayed to statues, you know, the Catholic, the Virgin Mary. You know, I never prayed to statues, because I thought that was kind of weird, kind of scary. None of you were like that, right? I come from a strong background of churchgoers, Christmas and <laughs> Easter. <laughs> strong. In fact, when the Mormons used to come to our house, even when I came back from overseas and I was renting a room in uh, a house in Kailua, a beautiful place, and the Mormons would come to the door, I answer the door, and they try to minister. I say, I'm a Roman Catholic. <laughs> Always roaming. I know it's supposed to be Roman, but as you know. But the Lord says that we are to trust Him, have faith. But He says, not everybody is of the faith. One of the translations, New Living Translation says this says that not everyone is a believer. Yeah. So it identifies to kind of break it down for us and help us out. This is in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 2. So most of the translation will say, not everyone has faith, which means trust in God. So we got to be careful on those things. In the world today, many believe only in themselves, what they perceive, what they believe to be true. This causes greed and power to take control of even the best of intentions and motives. But God says, turn to me. Trust me. Follow me. Pastor Bobby made a comment inside of our briefing. I briefed with the leaders in the morning on Sunday and Wednesday evening for a little while. This morning we went a little long. I was like doing a mini sermon in there. I think I had a little you know, preaching in there. But I was sharing that. And Pastor Bobby said it best. He said, you, we need to hear it in the truth of its application. In other words, we need to hear it like it is. Not try to butter it up. Try to put a little cotton candy on it. Filter it with, with some sugar. Because why? Because we're in very intense times. You have to be strong Christians, strong believers. You've got, we got to be, all of us. The world going to challenge you. I remember Pastor Al told me, you know, uh, Egypt. If you go to Egypt and you're a Christian and you preach on the street, they're going to test your faith. And if your faith don't stand their test, they'll kill you. Yeah. So you can preach, but you better have faith in God that you're there because God sent you there and you're preaching a gospel that you believe in, not just wanting everybody else to believe what you're saying. Uh, you didn't hear that. There's a difference in a lot of people that preach what they want people to hear and what the Word's saying. I'm not translating the Word. I'm just preaching it. It's pretty simple to me. I mean, you know, God says He'll reveal the mysteries. we got to understand, God, listen, God is without need or want. And if I was to ask you what I asked the leadership, who works the hardest that you know? There's only one answer. That's God. Never sleeps. I sleep. I take naps. More than one if I can. Because the 20-minute naps, they're good, but I like the booster, the one hour and a half. Where you just sleep, you get up and go, what, what day is it? What time? I don't know. Anybody ever been? I do those. You know, they're great though. When you get up, you feel really refreshed. You feel good, and we need that. Why? Because we have physical bodies. Even Jesus rested, because there was a physical body that housed the living power of God, the Son of God Himself. And we, so we have to rest our physical bodies. That's why He slept on the boat. They got all mad, right? Storm came up. They're getting mad at Him, right? What? Do something. We always asking Jesus to do something when there's a storm, but we hardly show up when there's all good times going on. Oh, we don't need them right now. We're good, we're good, we're good. Bills are paid, we're fine. Food on the table. I don't know about you, but when you praise Him through all of it, you always have food on the table. Your bills always get paid. Yeah. No, you might go through hard times. We go through hard times sometimes. But your greatest time of praise should be during the hard times, not complaining during the hard times. Yeah. It's easy to praise Him when you get what you want. It, it's easy. Oh, God, thank you so much. Oh, God, why? Oh, God, thank you. Oh, God, why? No. Chicken, why, why? I really don't know what that means because uh, <laughs> mom used to tell me that. But. Mom, why? Because chicken, why, why? You're not using the cough tonight. But what does that mean, chicken, why, why? We don't even have chickens. Chick Do they say why, why? We got plenty over here. 
Yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. He's, God is without need, without want. Can anyone counsel me, God says in his word? No. When he says, come, let us reason one with another, it means us listen. And he will speak. And he always speaks to us. Every one of us. There's nobody more special than the other. He loves all of us equally. I don't know anybody like that. I don't. My family, you always had a favorite. We had a big enough family, five, you got a favorite. Amen. I wasn't it. That's why I can say it. I know. And then all those years I thought that, and I thought, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong. My mom passed away. Oh, proven. My mom used to keep a black book. I think that's what my, my biological dad was, you know, Italian. So, so Maybe they keep record on things, you know. So she kept record of one of my brothers that she would do everything for. Oh, I'm sorry? All my family. But he had the, he had the big one. He had, he had the big blessing. Oh, yeah. No, I had a black book to prove it. I mean, <laughs> there it is. It's like the syndicate. There it is. Isn't it? There it is right there. I don't know why people keep records. Like my gra- I think my mom got that actually from my grandmother. You send her something for Christmas, she marks it down. And next Christmas, she give you equal. You send $20, you get $20. See, I expose my family. You guys hide yours. That's why your bones make a lot of noise at night. <laughs> rattling away, rattling away. Everybody's going, what about you? What about you? <laughs> that's the way it goes. There's a lot of things when I grew up. Now I understand it. That's why I get older. I go, oh, that's why my mom used to do that. That's why she used to do that. She also used to tell me, you think you're smarter than me, but that shows me how stupid you are. I wouldn't say that too often. That's when I was a teenager. I advanced, you know. I became a teenager. But my mom was right. She was right. The only thing I did right was getting born again. Amen. Really. And then, then my mom got born again. And I was so happy. And I prayed for her. And then she came to live with us for two years. Watch how you pray. But it was a good thing. And then she went home to be with the Lord. But she was in the right place at the right time with us. Um, no, I think it's okay. This, th- this thing just... The only reason I don't use a microphone is because I'll throw it at somebody. <laughs> but I've got to get my glasses. They're on their way then. I can see your faces right there. Right now, some of them are kind of blurry in the back. Yeah. Thank you for your truth, my dear. Thank you, Mom. In Isaiah 54, 17, we all know this scripture. You know, we, we recite it. I want to give it to you in God's word translation, which is closer to the Hebrew or Aramaic translation. Now, we know the scripture says, no weapon that has been made... I know it says formed in the King James... No weapon that has been made to be used against you. So there's weapons actually made just for you to be used against you personally by the enemy. Personal weapons, whatever that might be, whatever it might be, anger, lust, pornography, drugs, addiction, whatever weapon is more attached to you, he's going to use that. If you love money, he's going to use that. That's right. People don't like to talk about money because they're, they're so not in tune with God. Everywhere in the Bible, it doesn't say nothing in one place. You cannot test God in any other area than your giving. And people get mad. They start to read the Bible some places that I'm not at. Go knock yourself out. I'm a blessed man because I believe what my pastors taught me almost three decades ago. I used to love money. That's why I did what I did. And then you have to go through transition. You have to go through deliverance. And then, now money serves me. No matter what I do, no matter what job I'm doing. Because I know God in the way it should. So he always tests us in all areas. He has the right to test us in everything. But only in one place in the Bible, you go look it up. Does he say you can test him? And that's in giving. Malachi, yeah? Malachi chapter 3. But read the rest of that chapter down to the 16, 17, and 18 verse. When God looked down and he saw those that feared him, talking about him and glorifying him. And he said he opened up the scroll. The actual translation says in remembrance and started to see all those people and write down those people's names and he visited them. I don't know about you. I want God to come visit me. Yeah. Amen. Might be a little scary, but you know, what the heck, right? Because we really don't know what that means, right? The full glory of God is, is just intense. So it says, no weapon that has been made to be used against you will succeed. You will have an answer to everyone who accuses you. In this translation in the Hebrew, it's period, period, period. It's not comma, not continual. Did you get what I'm saying? makes a difference. Once we had a conference and Pastor Lauren out of Big Island uh, ministered about that, that we have Bibles that have commas and periods in the wrong places. You know message Bible? Ain't got none of that. It kind of goes on. No, I mean it's God, but I guess it goes on and on, right? So what that means is a PowerPoint is a period. We all know in English a period stops it and begins new. 
the comma continues, right? Let's, I'm not a great English person, but that's part of it. So it says, you will have an answer to everyone, period. Who accuses you, period. So God's making a statement. This is what I really love. This is the inheritance of the Lord's servants, period. Their victory comes from me, comma, declares the Lord. This is how they write it. This is how they emphasize it. I don't know about you, but I like that. I like it when no weapon that is made specifically against me, whether it's from my past, present, or future, that would try to come against me, that would be victorious over me or succeed. Because God says, you are my servant. Not because I'm doing all this right work, not because I'm a perfect person, but because I am a servant, a child of the living God. You know that song we sing in the beginning? Everybody jump, ah, yeah, yeah! You know, jumping around, right, right? It's a great song, right? Love Child. Remember that song before? Love Child, never meant to be. Love. Oh, you don't know that song? Must be that. Oh, man, oh, yeah. It's the time of the 60s when they were doing everything wrong, thinking they were right. Love Childs were children that were born out of sanction of marriage. Mm -hmm. That's where that song came from. Unfortunately, I have an old mind in the back. Remember some of those temptations and different things. Even, even a band called Temptations. Yeah? <laughs> we'll figure that, right? <laughs> we all get it later. Some of you go, what are you talking about? You have to be over 50 uh, to figure that out or somewhere around there. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe all these but goodies. <laughs> That's what she, but I know a lot of that music. Not those, but a lot of them before, you know. He'll, he'll crack you up sometimes. God is about to pour out the lump sum of his glory, which means all of it. And it's being prophesied to different, uh, whether it's uh, Hammond or uh, what's Leroy Thompson. Uh, I listened to, uh, what was the gentleman's name that he did? Perry Stone. Perry Stone is ministering from his office. And that's the fourth person I listen to as far as prophetically uh, for the new year. One thing Bill Hammond said that's so powerful, the prophets that spoke in reference to President Trump didn't say he was going to be reelected. You, you notice that? They said he was going to serve two terms. That's what they said. They didn't say what terms. That's why they're trying to impeach him now, right? So if they can impeach him now, then he can't run the next. Let me say Ned Hodder work at that. See, I don't care if you like him. I never liked him to begin with, but I voted for him. You know what? I can say that on film. Why? Because he did right by the people. Not the, not the people that were breaking into stores in the beginning and rebelling. Wait a minute, wait a minute. They didn't blame that on the Democrats or the, or, or the other authorities. They blamed it on another organization that was formed so that they could do that pill, pillaging in the streets. Yeah. And the governors didn't do anything. Yeah. Offered to take the National Guard to stop this nonsense. Only could he do it on a federal building. I'm not trying to give politics. Listen to the truth. Because you ain't going to get it from the media. No. Just look at the truth. But now they'll blame him for the Capitol. Now watch the footage. A lot of them guys look like they're white supremacists. They dismiss the police. So I saw the, where the police were going, come on, come on, come on. Who the heck does that? You know, people with phones, they're really good. The Trump supporters probably went. Because there were Trump supporters there. But not all pillaged in the Capitol. You notice that? It was just a handful. And yes, people died, and that's sad. But I saw the police that allowed them, encouraged them to come in. Didn't even stand their line. Nope. That's a federal building. So why am I sharing this? We're in troubled times. America's democracy is on the line. Your families are on the line. So I'm not asking you to become politically correct. I'm asking you to trust Jesus. I'm asking you to trust Jehovah God. That's what I'm asking. I'm not asking you to believe everything I say that you don't agree with. That's fine. Amen? I remember Prophet Nathan said, you know, rebellious Republicans and demonized Democrats, you know. In other words, there's a balance. You know, nobody's perfect. There's not good on either side. But it seems today that if you try to do good in the world, you're going to get criticized. And if you're a Christian, you will be persecuted. But the Bible says these things, that's why you got to know your word. These things and these events that Jesus talked about cannot take place until the church is persecuted. That's what it says. So we'll go through difficult times. But it doesn't mean we don't got the power. It doesn't mean God will not protect us. He's saying, I will protect you. Amen. I will see you through everything. I trust him 
And let me give you a clue for if you're born again. If you're born again, you have eternal life. Let me tell you something that I do know. That when you die, it's not a punishment. It's a reward. Because you go to where you started out. Eternal life. And that's why God gave me that word just this week, walking my dog in the backyard at night. He said, you live for eternal life now. You don't live for your life. In other words, we live external. Everything right here. I'm guilty of that. I'm a human. And I'm going to use that as an excuse here in the flesh. Y'all looking at me kind of weird. Where is, doesn't the Bible say, where is your sting? Death. Ain't no sting left in that. How we die might be unknown to us and when the time comes. But we have to be ready every day. We hear rapture ready. Amen. That's what we hear. In other words, be ready when God calls us home. Never promise. Thank you, Sister Charlene. That was in briefing. That I live for today. I can look for tomorrow, but I live today. Because the Bible says tomorrow is not promised. That's a definite with a period. So if we're living on promises that are not existent, you're living a lie. I can live fully today, and you can live to your, well, in age. I don't know when Jesus is coming, but we need to be ready. We need to be ready. Not perfect, ready. It's important. The overpowering fullness of his presence, which is God, is upon this earth right now moving in coincidence with the power that exists. In other words, God, the Holy Spirit's already here yeah. ministering with us. So now the glory of God comes. Now we know that God's glory has been upon the earth. So we wouldn't be here. But there's a Shekinah glory. The presence, the full presence of God. Old Testament can't enter the temple. We have Jesus so we can go in. But in those days when the cloud went in, people ran. The other people got slain in the spirit when they walked in. Pastor Holy shared it right. They tie a rope to the priest with a bell. Because if he did anything wrong, nobody know about it. They didn't want to talk about it. They didn't confess and bring forth a sacrifice at that time because Jesus wasn't present yet there on earth. Right? So if he had guilt of sin in his life, he dropped dead in the temple. They wouldn't go in and get him because they got sin in their life. So they're going to pull him out by the rope. Be sad if every time we come in here, we're going to put a rope to us. <laughs> Praise God for Jesus. We don't have to do Amen. that. Amen. But some of us, we come with bells. We sound good. <laughs> They're saying. The Lord is saying, we must trust Him. That's all I'm saying to you. Trust God. Please, I'm asking you now, more than ever in your life, trust Him. Because that's the only way you're going to be victorious. That's the only way. You can test it, but that test might prove to have consequences that you're not willing to pay. And I can't tell you those consequences. And continue trusting him no matter what. That's what Romans 11.22 says. He says, he is kind, he is severe. Translation might say, in severity, his goodness or his kindness and severity, which means God is God. He don't change for nobody. Malachi 3.6 a lot, of, a lot of stuff is mentioned in Malachi chapter 3, the last uh, chapter in the Bible, the last, not the last chapter, the last book in the Bible, chapter is chapter 4, but powered in the Old Testament before Matthew. It's the M&M, yeah. not the candy, amen. <laughs> so trusting him is the key. A lot of people don't like the latter part of 11.22 in Romans, where it says that if you don't continue trusting in me, I'll cut you off. What? God doesn't do that. He's loving. If the word says it, that settles it. He's talking about the grafting of the branches. You know, if anybody ever broke a bone before? You know when it mends, isn't it stronger than the original setting of what it was? That's what they say biologically and anatomy, right? It's stronger than what it was. Doctors will tell you that. Benaiah uh, had a crack right around his arm. He broke his, actually, severely, what do they call it? Fractured it, I guess. Fell and cracked right around. They saw it on an x-ray. But the doctor said, don't have to put a cast, just keep it in a sling because it'll build its own cast just a matter of weeks. How powerful is our bodies created? It creates its own cast, and then it becomes stronger than it was. So God, through your hard times, through your difficult times, he makes you stronger than what you were. That's where that term goes, if it don't kill you, <laughs> make you stronger. There's a song out there that says that, the road was hard, so you'd be strong. <laughs> God didn't promise you a rose garden. You, you, you planted the rose garden. Amen? But even that rose garden got what? Thorns. Uh, nobody's happy today. It's okay. I'm happy. <laughs> so 
Psalm 24, 1 says this. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. That's what it says. The world and all its people belong to him. So it didn't say just the saved or unsaved. It said all the people belong to him. And according to the word, God has given, listen, given this church and every church the power when we trust him. Every body of Christ. This is the sanctuary where we worship. And some might be sitting there going, it's an old theater. I used to come here. Yeah, well, it's got glory now. Hallelujah. Yeah. God transforms everything. And when we saw the vision here, we were at Pizza Hut when they were charging that, whatever, $6 special for all you can eat. That's where all the Christians went. We ain't stupid. How much was seven? Seven dollars. Yeah. Seven dollars. Yeah, all you could eat. I mean, amazing. No, yeah. I'd wait. I'd wait for the pizza I want. Yeah. No, no. And in fact, you want to hear something funny? I met Prophet Nathan there too. And he spoke to me right across the counter, picking up pizza. You, you wanna, you wanna meet some Christians? You go where good food is, <laughs> at a reasonable price, of course. Yes. <laughs> yeah, God is good. So according to the word, that's what it is, and we must trust Him throughout everything that we do. That's all I'm here to say today. God will protect you. God will protect me. He'll protect us. Thank you, brother. He'll protect all of us. But we have to trust Him. I'm not standing here saying, trust me. I'm saying, believe in the Word. I'm standing here saying, trust Him. Trust Jehovah God. Yahweh. Creator of all existing things. In fact, it says in the book of John, chapter 1, if it doesn't exist, He didn't create it. That's what it says. Gospel John. First chapter. We know there also Jesus came, right? And manifested in the flesh that we might be saved. I don't know about you, but I love what Bill Hammond said. A simple, a simple question he asked as he was speaking to the body. And he said this. He said, what is the will of God? Do you want the will of God done in your life? And they were saying yes. Some were saying yes. And then he was saying, what is the will of God? He was asking, what is the will of God? Well, Pastor Hopi taught me by his own preaching many, many years ago at Church of God that the will of God is according to Scripture that none should perish and all come to repentance. That's the Word of God. And that's the Scripture he used. I believe that. You know why? Because isn't that the perfect will of God? That everybody go to heaven? Everybody make it? Nobody's left behind? Even the ones you're mad at? Even the ones that made you grouchy and made you ugly sometimes? Sometimes we're ugly, you know. Sometimes we, we, uh, we're ugly sometimes. Amen. That's why I love Bob's, Pastor Bobby's mom, Kapoor's mom. When, when the kids used to act up, she used to say, Don't be ugly, right? Said, Don't be ugly. You ugly. I mean, it's not a nice thing to say, but you know what? You ugly when you're acting like that. Yeah? It's right. You know? And it, it's hard to be a parent. You all know your parents. It's hard. It takes a lot of work. You didn't pick your children, and your children didn't pick you. So you stuck with each other. So make the best of it and love your parents. Honor them and you'll live long upon the land. First promise and a command that God gives. God is good. So I'm asking you this morning, trust Him. That's all I came to say. He will protect you. He will protect you. Have we not been blessed? Have you not kept us healthy? Have we not searched Him out to help us stay healthy? Have you not recovered us from terrible accidents? Like Sister Carol and Brother James goes through much. Continually helping us. Continually. Amen. Even the fire dancer. Okay, okay, okay. So use them flashlight. But that's safe, right? That's safe. <laughs> I still love that. I just say, what? <laughs> I can do that one. I might drop the flashlight, though, but nevertheless. It's, uh, but God is that good to us always, you know. And, and he has a sense of humor. Amen. All you got to do is get up, look in the mirror in the morning. He has a sense of humor. I know some know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I go, thank you for having a sense of humor, Lord. But he loves us. He cares for us. He cares for our soul. He cares for our families and our children. But he also requires trust. Brother Joseph D. Camera, his testimony of the tumor in his brain and how they took it out, they cut it out. And I mean, the blessing of it not being cancer, the blessing of his brain shrinking back, the tumor comes out and the, the brain moves back into position again. Amen. And he still get angry sometimes. He'll never take away everything. But he's a miracle to me. He, yes. he's, he's a bona fide miracle. <laughs> and I was privileged to, yes, no, yeah, he is. That just don't happen. Why? 
Because God has purposed his life with a call in his life. He has an assignment and a task. He may not know it all like we don't know it all. All of us don't. But he's willing to do it. He's willing to submit to God. So God says, this is the life I'm giving you now. I'm going to take all this out of you. He didn't put it in him. Pastor Al, 30 years in the military, served five deployments. Iraq took the 442, comes back, gets a quadruple bypass. And he's healthier than he's ever been. I look at him, his brother works out, he's up. But to go through all that, God said, no, 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 the enemy ain't going to take you out. He ain't going to do that. And I've been told, as I did a little study, those positions that he held in his lieutenant colonel and those in high stress level, especially when you're in combat battle, high stress, responsible for, was it 680 men? Something like that, right? The 442? Go for broke. I was there at the transfer. I was honored to be in certain places at certain times by God's witness so that I can witness. I honor the people in this house. I honor the church. The church is us. I know God put you here. Brother Danny, Vietnam, an intense war. Two of my cousins never came home. Empty boxes. They couldn't find them. But we honored that time. I was a young kid. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God brings people of honor in this house. To honor God and to honor the military and those that serve and everyone that does things in life that helps others. Reverend Ty, a missionary, he served. A lot of people don't know. But there are mighty men of God that serve. Amen. Amen. There's a gentleman that came and visited us, the one that did our security system. That, that gentleman's dad is a retired colonel for the Air Force. So moved by two tours in Afghanistan. That today, and I won't mention no names, today, what he does, beside what he does, because he is retired, smuggles Bibles into Afghanistan through Sweden. Because he picked up a mission along the way, picked up his task along the way, saw things and children and women being mistreated and hurt, and he said they got to get the gospel in their language. Amen. So that means only a few, and if they get caught, guess what happens? Anyone take a guess? They're killed, they're executed. Children included. We are blessed. We, are. we have no complaints here. We have the freedom to praise, the freedom to preach, the freedom to read our word openly, the freedom that children can actually be smart and be taught and not suppressed. We are blessed. And all I'm asking you to do is trust God. That's all I'm asking. So, Father, we thank you this morning, and we bless you. Before I pray, I want to just say, remember, we begin our fast tomorrow corporately for... 21 days, pray and ask God for yourself that he would help you to understand and to pray, to get closer to him, to get intimate with him, to be in his presence, what you should sacrifice. Something that is meaningful to you. Amen? Something that means something. Not to get anything, but to get closer to God. That's all it is. Don't forget February 7th is our 21 anniversary here, 21 years in this location. And we're going to have bentos because we know the rules are really weird, right? So I want to encourage you. That's why I didn't want to. I wanted to do it before I pray. I wanted to encourage you before you leave. Pick up your bento. Go home and watch the Super Bowl. No grumbling, right? You don't have to hang out. We're gonna put up a tent because you know you can't put up a tent bigger than a small umbrella. That is ridiculous. But anyways, so we can put a lot of small umbrellas. But anyways, but we're gonna do that. And Pastor Bobby's suggestion, which I thought was a great suggestion, uh, we're gonna get him from Pink Line Super Red. So make sure you pick up your bento, February 7th, Super Bowl Sunday. We always have our anniversary on Super Bowl Sunday. Don't ask me why. It's just the dates are always falling into place. So don't forget that too, please. The celebration is to thank God Amen. for what he's done here with all of us and everyone and helping everyone. So please do that, all right? It'll be outside. It'll be located. Easy to see. Pick up your bento. Amen. And praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't gather more than five. Just kidding. I'm just praising the Lord. I know you're going to have your big parties in your garage too. Amen. Some do that anyway. They go, we're going to defy everything. We're just going to do whatever we want. Amen. Hallelujah. But God is good, right? All right. Father, we thank you and bless you. I thank you this morning for all your body of Christ, the people that have come here, those watching. Bless them, Father. We thank you for each and every one tuning in today from Mom and Dad Nolan to the Dillions to uh, Roxanne and Steve out in Chicago and California. We have Pastor Jesse and Sandy Reyes and all the team there and also those that tune in there. I thank you for Wine Eye and, and those watching there. And Father, we just thank you and bless you. All the children. We have Ua, we have Alika, we have Samuel. And we bless you for everyone watching and tuning in. Some from here and some from other places. Texas, we thank you for them watching. God bless you guys. I want to just send out a love you.
praise the Lord with you. And do not be concerned for our God. He will protect us. God will protect you. I ask you again, please trust him. Every day of your life, in your relationships, in your jobs, in your applications. And pray this morning that God would just bless you and touch you. If you've never asked Jesus into your heart, I'd like to pray with you. And just think about that for a moment. Because truly, Jesus wants to dwell in your heart. And so this morning, if that's you, if you've never asked Jesus into your heart, if you're in the house, just raise your hand. If you're on, watching on camera or archives or YouTube, whatever it is you're using, whatever technology you have available, raise your hand so we can see you. Once you receive Jesus, you become part of the family. We're all God's children, but we really don't become part of the family until we receive Christ. That's what Jesus said. No one go to the Father except through me, and no one cometh to me except the Father sent him. So, Father, we thank you this morning. If you're watching, just pray with me. Lord Jesus, forgive me my sins. Come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. I receive you today, and I know that I'll never, ever be the same again. Thank you, Father, for all you have done. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. If you prayed that prayer, give us a call. Give us an email. We want to pray with you. As Pastor Bob always says, we want to send you a Bible. We want to help you out whatever way we can. If you're in the community and you don't have a place to fellowship, come and join us. If you're on another island, we'd like to help you out, maybe point you in the right direction. A lot of churches aren't open or fellowships. We can help you out a little bit there, too, just kind of point you in the right direction. We love you and care about you. we got good ground here. We're blessed. We serve the community. We also have 24 outreaches that we give here and internationally because we're a missions church. So God bless you. All you got to do is go to the site, go to truthmaui.org. It'll take you to the website or the link on the bottom. Press the green button when you get there. Boom, it'll take you right into the place to plant a seed. Remember, you can only reap what you sow. And this is a lump sum power that's coming in now that we're feeling it, seeing it, experiencing it. But we want to do more than that. We want to participate in it. God bless you. Have a great day. Love y'all. God bless. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.